Welcome to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Paint, Rest, Repeat. We are so excited you're here, and we send you a massive thank you for listening and tuning in. We appreciate you. We see you, and thank you so much. Um, The beautiful Laura and I are going to be chatting today about um, where you are up to in your art career and if you are where you want to be. It's a juicy topic. What do you reckon? Yes. Um, it's interesting to reflect, isn't it? And sort of feel into how you feel about um, success and and what goals you're reaching for and, yeah, how you feel about where you're sitting in the scale of like your art business and your art career. Um, and if you feel like um, you're achieving the things that you set out to do or not. And if you're not at the level of success that you want to be, like why, like sort of considering why that might be. Um, yeah. So I thought that this was an interesting one to dive into. Yeah. It's a really, it's actually quite deep. It's not just Mm. about, this is where I would like to be in my career and let's just achieve those things. And then Mm -hmm. we'll be there and we'll be happy forevermore. Mm. I think because we are complex creatures and also often that your target, like your goalposts or whatever shift, not necessarily massively, but they shift. So you might try or think you want to get into art licensing, for example, and start moving in that direction and go, oh, hang on, actually, actually, no, 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 no. And so therefore your end goal has shifted. So anyway, we just, we need to sort of backtrack, I think perhaps maybe and talk first really about what success is. Do you think that's a good starting point? Like what is success to you Mm -hmm. as an artist? Yeah, well, I think it's all, it's personal to everyone. Um, And the way that I define success in my art business will be different to how you define success in your business. And I think we need to think about it in terms of our life as well. And, you know, how this uh, beautiful art thing and this beautiful art lifestyle and things that we're building um, comes into play in everything else because there are shifting parts and just like everything in your life, you go through seasons. So there, there could be a season that you're selling work. There could be a season um, that you're um, teaching. There could be a season that you're like it, it's a fellow season and you, and you may not um, it, like you're taking things slowly and softly, or uh, you could be like launching something like a really big project and collaborating with organizations. Like there's so many ways that you can take this art career. And yeah, I think doing some introspection and thinking about what a successful art career is to you And it could be a quiet little one. It could be you painting in your studio and showing your work in a, in a local gallery. And, and that's, you're really happy just doing that. Or it could be something bigger and you want to do art fairs in America or overseas. Like it, it, it's totally different to everyone, I think. I really like how you also mentioned that it's it's holistic, you know, like your art is you you're we're all complex and we've got multi multiple sort of facets and parts of our lives and just looking at our whole lives as as an entire unit and how art fits in. And I think of you in particular because you love your travel and so that's a big thing for you and that's success for you I imagine one part of that would be building a business that allows you to do that. So that as long as you're still traveling at least once or twice or whatever it is a year, then you're ticking that box. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, that's not a thing. So for me, my goals and my 
definition of success is different to you. So yeah, I think that is really important that people can, um, our listeners, spend some time on reflecting what is success for me you, you like it is specifically in the area of art but with consideration of the whole picture as well mm-hmm. um the other one that we talked about before this was oh, i'm going to change plans i was going to mention no, no change your plans change plans we'll come right. back to it later go i'm so intrigued <laughs> <laughs> we're going to come back to that later yeah so, because it makes more sense right now to move on to once you've defined success and you've worked out what that perhaps means to you okay let's not be perfectionists here so we're just getting a mud map like a little rough plan a rough idea of what success looks like for you why don't you feel successful now yeah in like what areas oh see, so it, are you thinking if someone is doubting themselves right now yeah and they don't feel like they've kicked their goals just yeah. yet yeah I'm like talking what, more. Why is that? Yeah, more on the emotional side. Why don't mm-hmm. you feel successful? What are your expectations for yourself? Yes, that you're yep. not meeting. Mm-hmm. And is that because you're lazy, Larry, <laughs> or mm-hmm. is that because they're unrealistic expectations? Mm. Because perhaps those expectations don't sit in the real world, you know, because they don't mm-hmm. factor in everything else. You can't look at art like we were talking about. You can't look at the art part of your life in isolation of the rest. You know, mm-hmm. you can't have two young children and like preschool age and be kicking all those goals that other artists are. Or for you as well with your you know, chronic health issues, mm-hmm. you can't be like, others that do have like you don't have that as a problem mm-hmm. but you tell me more about that I'm not you <laughs> well yeah what bar are you setting for yourself mm. and is there a way if you don't feel successful mm. that you can be gentler and kinder to yourself and embrace uh slow growth because <laughs> Everyone has so many different parts to their life going on outside of building an art career and business and making money and all of the things that go into the, a business. Um, how can you be okay with separating things out and just slowly prioritising the things that you want to improve? Um because we all know running an art business is not just in the studio and things are just lovely and we're just painting away. We have to market and promote ourselves. We have to liaise with galleries or external places to sell our work. Um, We need to be um, sending out emails, working with customers. Um, There's so many different things. If you teach workshops, you're planning and preparing and there's there's so many different aspects. But um, if you're not feeling like you're hitting all the goals and being successful in every single part of your business, like how can you, I don't know, like make a plan uh, to just slowly get 1% better or, you know, I don't know. I don't know where that train of thought was going, Uh, but what's your response? (laughs) Yeah, no, I love this because you talk about slow growth. And if you're watching the YouTube video, I'm smiling from ear to ear because (laughs) I've got a problem with slow. Okay. So I go, I go pretty fast, but that is almost a problem. You know what I mean? Like it's almost a problem because I just never stop. And anyway, I can talk more about that. But the whole slow thing, there is a lot of value in slow. For the first time ever, I messaged someone today and I said, slow and steady is the new plan. Are you in shock, Laura? Wow. I know. Slow and steady. Like, what is wrong with me today? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's not my thing. But now, as you were talking about this whole um, expectation side of things and how we have to learn so much so much to our business like there's so many different sides like the second you start email marketing you've got to learn about that what Mm -hmm. platform are you going to use Mm -hmm. how are you going to manage how are you going to collect email addresses how are you going to manage those email addresses what are you going to send them how are you going to take those photos where are you going to edit those photos um how are you going to check if people are opening your emails how often are you going to send those emails there's just 
so much. So I feel like every time we take on something new in our art business, um, we have to be, like you were saying, kind to ourselves, realize that we're learning. Um, and just sort of take it bit by bit. I love how, because you're doing a little bit of a focus at the moment on social media. Yes, right? I'm wanting to improve my social media. And I've got a consultant that's helping me with that and also the scheduling and um, just, you know, sort of collating all of my images in one spot. Mm. Like even just getting my brain around that, and getting the images from my phone into cloud storage, then sharing that with my social media girl and like all the little systems and things that come into play. And then, you know, you know, all the different um, uh, content, like how do we do the content? How do Mm -hmm. we do the hashtags? Like it's so much and you could go so in depth, but yeah, I do have a focus on sort of getting better at that because I feel like there is like a bit of an age gap and I see people like 10 years younger than me and they're just kicking it and it just is second nature. I have to work really hard with with that and I don't want it to be hard and I don't want it to be a distraction. I actually want it to be like feel good and um, be a bit more streamlined. So if I could put a bit of pre-planning into it, then I know that it's just ticking away. So Um, for you, you know, in your business, one gauge of success would be having systems in place where you have a steady presence on social media without the stress, you know? mm -hmm. So that sounds like that's a gauge for success for you in terms of your art business. Um, I think also just a word on processes. I think a lot of artists, tell me if I'm wrong, I don't think many artists are amazing at processes like that pre-planning and pre-planning um knowing where to put your files and then how to what is next and then also working with other people and telling them in a nice way but so they know what to do what the steps are and yeah I think um there is a bit a big tech hurdle and there's like it's a big wild wide world like you were talking about email marketing um, there's managing your website, there's all the social media channels, add in video editing and all of that. Um, there is like so much to be on top of. So it can be overwhelming for artists because I don't know, we're creative beings and we just want to be in the flow state all the time mm-hmm. and we want to play and just paint and be all la di da and out in the world and <laughs> <laughs> just splash and paint about. Yeah, so, but then when we turn it into a business, it's like, mm. oh my gosh, okay, I've got to learn all these new things, and um, yeah, that pre planning mm. doesn't doesn't quite fit with the the creative free flowing, you know, being you know, being in the moment sort of um, yeah. aspect of being a creative person. I think that's right. And I think that's why it's not always, like you're saying, a perfect fit, but there are ways to do it mm-hmm. um, that align with you and how you work um, as an artist. So it's just a matter of finding that what, what works, um, get, getting a system going around mm-hmm. it, um, mm-hmm. and then the consistency. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a dirty word. Yeah, consistency. Um, <laughs> on that, figuring out how you work, mm. that is something that I've done a bit of reflection on and I think that would be a useful tool for people just to sort of think like throughout your day, how do you work best? Are you a morning person or are you an um, afternoon person or are you a late night person? And if there are things in your business that you're wanting to improve on, like how can you put that into your calendar and like set aside that time and sort of think about when you're going to show up as your best version of yourself and have that focus. Even we talk about that. So with our podcast recording, we mm. always try to do the morning um, mm. because that just suits both of us um, the best so that we, you know, turn up as our best selves. Um, the other one there, oh, my goodness, my brain has gone everywhere. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. No, <laughs> the 
this idea when you've got all these things that you've got to do. Some of them are hard. Some of them are not natural to you, but they have to be done. Knowing yourself is really um, important, like you're saying. And also this really gross expression, which I really, really hate, but it's really true, which is the whole swallowing the frog in the morning. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, it sounds disgusting. Swallow the frog in the morning? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, like you get yeah, the so most just awful getting... job done mm, first. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So I've been trying to do a little bit of that because it, just stupid things I decide are not something I want to do are like invoicing. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> it's not hard. It doesn't take long. Mm. I've got templates. They're ready to roll. Mm. I swear it takes five to ten minutes and I still just don't want to do it. So it's a good thing to do that first thing in the morning. Yep. get it done mm-hmm. um and then you can move on and splash some paint about yeah you want to get yeah. paid <laughs> yeah. well there's that too there's that too oh my goodness so I'm um, thinking about our listeners um and so we've talked a lot about the art business sort of side so like marketing and social media which is marketing email marketing social media right? you know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. um and how we have to do all of these things and that we need to be kind to ourselves during this journey right mm-hmm. um but what about our listeners who are not fully in that space they're just more thinking about this you know whether they're at the point where they want to be in their art career but they're more focusing on their studio practice rather than the art business stuff do you mm-hmm. have any thoughts on that so they're wanting to grow grow the business they're wanting to improve their skills find their style sell mm-hmm. some work mm. all right so someone that's sort of starting out mm. and just wanting to sell their work well mm. I think it's a lot about um goal setting and we mm. do have an episode on that so figuring out the avenues that you want to sell your work um whether you're going to approach a gallery um there was another episode that we were going to we want to refer people to as well, Mm -hmm. which is starving artists to ways to make an income as an artist. And that was episode 30 Mm -hmm. where we talked about that reflection, like um, do you want to be a represented artist? Do you want to self-represent? And all the different avenues that you can take uh, when you're starting out and, and really reflecting and thinking about what sort of artist you do want to be and then yeah I guess it is about having that time thinking and really just figuring out what your next big goal is or what your project is related to that path mm, and then reverse engineering that um, especially if you're starting from scratch Mm -hmm. it would be researching um, galleries that your work can um, be uh, represented in and um, if you're wanting to self-represent, mm-hmm. what are the ways that you can put your work out there? Are you going to utilise social media? Is there um, a skills gap? And all of the different things that you want to slowly improve on. Um, and yeah. then you can head to episode 18 and listen to <laughs> yeah. um, us chat about goal setting. So mm-hmm. I think what, once you know roughly your direction, mm-hmm. well, the direction that you're choosing to look at right now, because I like to, you know, we are fluid beings. Um, once you know your direction, then you can start to sort of get some goals out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and having those goals is a really easy way to check on your success without yeah. the layer of the all the emotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just wanted to drop in there too because me and Roz both do one-on-one mentoring over Zoom. So if you are having uh, any trouble clarifying that and like figuring out your direction, just um, hit us up in a DM and, yeah, we're happy to do like um, casual one-off sessions with you Um it won't be both of us. <laughs> it's it's separate through our businesses. <laughs> and but I thought that's worth um, dropping in because I think, you know, if you are a real beginner and you're, you're a bit lost and you're like, there's so many different things, like I'm so overwhelmed, like I don't know where to focus on first. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like we've, we've done the path and, you know, we're still growing our careers. But if we're just like a few steps forward than you and you look at us and you're like, I, I want to be where that they're at, then it's it's worth um, talking to people that are like a few steps ahead and just um, figuring out 
how they put processes in place to to get there. And also a little note, if you book in with Laura rather than me, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait okay. a record. Like You're I would funny feel girl. that. <laughs> I would feel that because Well, they rather with... resonate with you or me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you... But what happens if they <laughs> resonate with both of us? Then what are we going to do? Oh, well, we should do a we, dual we need our, You know what we were talking about at some point? Um, We wanted to do an art business workshop. Oh, my gosh, we did. We, we were going to do like a joint workshop. Yes. All right, send us a message, guys, <laughs> if that is something that you want us to do. We, we can were do... thinking like an in-person one in Sydney or something. Yeah, but then I got all technical and I was saying we could we could also broadcast it online at the same oh. time. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. I don't know. Oh, or we could run a masterclass. <laughs> Anyways, like the, the options. Oh, look at us going and adding more things to our plate. <laughs> I could do it. I could do it. Slow, so overrated. Just I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> um, um, so the thing that I wanted to loop back on before, you know how I mentioned, I wanted to talk mm-hmm. about something, which was an idea that you actually raised with me prior to recording, but also relates to something else I know, um, which is about reflection. Mm-hmm. There's a very, very often we forget to look back at where we were a year ago, two years Mm -hmm. ago, three years ago, Facebook occasionally for me pops up these artworks that I created a year ago, two years ago. And I'm like, oh my God, (laughs) (laughs) I made that. And I thought that was good. So Mm. we, but they're good reminders and no, I'm not going to share it again on my feed, but (laughs) um, it makes me see how far I've come. And I will probably think the same thing a year from now. So (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah. We're all human and we're always evolving. We're constantly evolving. And I always say that the second we stop learning, the second we stop evolving, that's when life gets boring. So um, yeah, we need to aim at that growth. But yeah, reflecting back is a good idea. Do you have any sort of recommendations for how to do that? Yeah. Yeah. What about a task? Um, so a practical step that you could take is to scroll back to on your Instagram or Facebook feed and see what you were doing one year ago. Mm, that's, or you I could go, that's a good one. You could go further and go to two or three years mm-hmm. and you will be so chuffed with yourself, uh, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm Love, sure. You're so good because you take the positive. When, when, it's, when I look at myself I, and I see my old photos, I'm like, oh, that was terrible, rather than I'm amazing now. <laughs> Okay. I love so, your positive. No, oh, okay. no, we're so choosing your way. <laughs> <laughs> but if okay, if someone's in your mindset, I would scroll back. You've got two years, two years of growth. Um, I'd even pull out your diary as well, and I'd get a big piece of paper and I'd start writing from number one, and then you can write everything that you have achieved, and and it can be like physical outgoing like events and things but it can also be internal shifts Mm. so just looking at like what sort of reflections and what sort of things you were saying about the world two years ago uh, you could be in a a totally different mindset Um, and you could have grown as a person as well through that whole time Um, and look at it from a lens of gratitude as well Mm. So I'm so grateful that um, I connected with you, Roz, and you bought that artwork from me when I did that Instagram sale um, after my exhibition. And then we started talking about collaboration and how we had this idea of a podcast. We also talked about The Bachelor. (laughs) (laughs) Did we? I can't remember. (laughs) I miss that show so much. (laughs) <laughs> I've been anyway, playing carry catch, on. <laughs> I've been playing catch up um on the bachelors um because I was away when that was all on so I've been on um replay on my um smart tv and mm. I've just binge watch anyways that was totally a different track um <laughs> I had that effect sorry <laughs> but the lens of gratitude so mm. I'm so grateful and then um last November we had our year celebration of the podcast mm. so that's within that two-year timeline 
Mm. And so now we've got, um, what episode is this? 35. We've got 35 episodes out of this podcast. And no, it wasn't perfect at the start. We were, we didn't know what we were doing, but, but we but, just had this idea that we wanted to create a podcast together. And what our listeners will find is that now all of our episodes are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. you... I'm talking about the bachelor. I'm, I'm sure being like, some silly, people I'm are like, oh my god. Oh, it doesn't ladies. matter though. Like, it's all right. Crazy is good. <laughs> um, yeah, beautiful. But... I love that the lens of gratitude. Um, mm-hmm. and also you talk a little bit more about this than me generally, but the abundance mindset as well. Like, what do you have? What achievements have you made? Um, rather than the other way around. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. um so reflection is really important Mm -hmm. the practical task is scrolling back on your feed I think two years is two years is good like Mm. I think you know you'll be able to see enough change within that yeah um and then future tripping like so another practical task would be future tripping and um like something that I've done to sort of manifest things is writing down a letter and thanking the universe for you receiving them. Mm. So for me, like with what I'll give you a practical example of what, what I mean. Um, I am so happy and grateful now that I have booked my gin and painting workshops and I have a full class and all of the participants have had an amazing experience. Um, and I feel so happy and grateful that I'm able to share um, the art making process with others. And so, yeah, just writing all of the things that you want to uh, manifest. Like they've already happened. Like it's, like it's already happened mm. and with gratitude. Yeah. I heard the other day of a really good idea. This was on another podcast, which I'm trying to remember the name. It's called The School of Greatness. It's really oh, interesting. Oh, Lewis Howes. Yeah. yeah I, I don't love actually, Lewis Howes. I don't yeah. really even know who he is. Mm. He was an athlete or something. Mm-hmm. But he has lots of really interesting guests on his podcast talking about all sorts of things from health to relationships to whatever. I just find it really interesting. Mm-hmm. And one of his um, one of his guests, and I'm trying to remember her name it probably won't come to me but anyway go and listen to his podcast um she talked about writing down a list of all the things you uh what was it all the things you want yeah yeah sorry the choice of terminology is important yeah so write Mm -hmm. down a list of all the things you want and this woman told this story of how she wrote down all the things she wanted and she was like oh all right, I'll try to think big. She goes, one one Jaguar, one condo in somewhere. I don't know, it's American. It's condo in <laughs> somewhere nice, California. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been to many areas of America. Anyway, and the person who led her through this exercise said to her, but why, why only one Jaguar? She goes, well, that's all I need. And why do you want a condo in California? You know, why not a house? She's like, well, I don't need anything bigger than a condo, like a condo being an apartment or, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever it is in Australia. And it was really interesting what she was saying is that we limit ourselves naturally. Mm -hmm. We just, we limit ourselves. So you can actually dream bigger with your wishes for your art business. You can dream bigger and you can work towards those bigger dreams. Um, Mm -hmm. And we're here to encourage you and (laughs) (laughs) and, um, to cheer you on as well. So, yeah, I just thought that was really interesting. Talking about achievements Mm -hmm. and um, projects that you want to work Mm -hmm. towards in your art business, Mm -hmm. you have an amazing thing that you have, been organizing and it is coming up really really soon it so is. yeah do you want to do a bit of promo for your exhibition yeah definitely so I have a group show coming up um and I'm one of the head organizers and it's in Sydney it's at the corner gallery in Stanmore and our opening night is on I'm checking my calendar it is on March I on March the 29th it's a Wednesday and I, at this stage it will be from 5 p.m but you can head to the link um somewhere 
in the show notes um, mm -hmm. to grab yourself a free ticket. It is ticketed because we have a space, space, you know, restrictions. So definitely grab a ticket. It's called Fluorescence and we, it's all about florals and botanicals and the importance of looking after mother nature. And we've got seven artists in the mix and I will drop their links and all of that down below in the show notes as well, um, because they're fabulous. And there are some really juicy big names in there. So if you are in Sydney on that date, come over, come and say hi. We'd love to meet you in person. Um, and who knows, you may be able to set up your own group show based on the people who you, um, what, what do they say, rub shoulders with? Yeah. Yep, that one. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> we'd love to we'd love to meet you. So yeah, come come along to the opening or one of the you know regular gallery days. We'll be there every day. One of us will be there every day. Cool. Yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> and like these things like don't just happen. Like, you know, you've got to put it out there and you have to um just like slowly work towards it. Like it hasn't just all happened by magic. So this, so this you, is you, yeah, I'm just trying to say this is exactly right. So this space, the corner gallery where we have the group show is a space hire arrangement, which mm -hmm. I sought out. And then mm -hmm. I approached other artists to say, would you like to be in a group show with me? And mm -hmm. you have to make it happen. I think a lot of the time people sit on the sidelines and they wonder when is an opportunity going to find me? But mm -hmm. sometimes you've got to go and find it. Mm -hmm. Um and the, the key is knowing where you want to go and therefore mm -hmm. you can seek out opportunities that are going to help you to move towards that in that direction. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Cool. Yay. And what are you up to? Are you Ballaratting yet? I know you live in am Ballarat. I, am I Ballaratting? <laughs> Ballaratting. You know what I mean. The, the, the project. The, yeah. Your project. Has that started yet? Um, so the first workshop is mm. on the 25th of March. Ooh. So, oh yeah. Okay. We release this on the 15th, I think. So we that's do. 10 days away. Yay. Um, so I don't know if it's fully booked or not because this is past <laughs> Laura talking. <laughs> Oh, we are coming so I have no from idea, the past. but send me a DM and we can chat if you want to come and um, have fun and paint and play with me. Um, but it will be every month for the Beautiful. year. Beautiful. And the Not link December. will be in your, yeah. you know, Insta bio and show notes yeah, 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 and yeah. da da da. Yeah. All of that. Beautiful. Cool. Well, good episode today. If you have any questions or if you want to chat about this further, um, please uh, let us know and reach out. We'd love a review of the podcast. So if you're enjoying these conversations, if they're helping you, we'd love a share on your Instagram. If you if you love in these chats and want to share the love and spread the word through the Instagram art community, we'd really, 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 really appreciate that. And we love to reshare those shares so that can help to promo you as well. So mm -hmm. that's all from us. A big thank you. We love you lots. I mean, not romantic <laughs> love, but we love you lots. Um, yeah. and <laughs> go and tune in to some of those other episodes we mentioned as well. It was episode 18 and episode 30. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>